guys, a little bit of Wednesday wisdom. I want to share with you one of my diagrams about keeping in the control zone. So I will record this as well for those of you that don't happen to be live right now. Um, and welcome for those of you that come on this episode. I want to talk about how you keep your inner ecosystem. Oh, hi, just the person I was thinking about. How you keep your inner ecosystem sovereign and settled regardless of what chaos is going on around you in the external world. So we all know this stuff, right? We know there are things that we can't control. We know there are people, places, objects, and the world, and anything to do that is outside of us is basically none of our business. We don't know how people are going to react. Uh, we don't even know how our kids are going to react. They are their own sovereign beings, and they basically... Um, Oh, someone wants to, oh, with, with the old, this is, I've never done this before. So hi, Carly. So I want to talk to you about um, really jumping on board with your own control zone. So if you go and rent a boat, for example, and you have your boat license, but you're going to rent a boat, uh, each engine usually has what's on it something called a governor and that governor kind of uh, reduces the speed that you can go so it keeps you at a maximum speed according to the boat rental uh, company to make sure that people don't kill themselves and do something stupid but it's kind of what's happened to us in life we've all had governors put on our engines we've had these limiting beliefs these rules these shoulds these coulds these kind of things about how a family situation is supposed to look like what a relationship is supposed to look like how it's supposed to show up in life you've got to eat your meat and your vegetables before you can have your dessert etc etc and i want to talk to you about owning your own central space on a cellular level that no matter what goes on around you and what rules you observe and anyone else's operating systems you get to be in charge of the speed that you operate at uh, where you're going in the ocean of life and how you want to direct that and it's so important it's probably one of the most vital lessons that I ever teach my clients in quantum work which is unless you're in this space you shouldn't be making any decisions unless you're in your zero gravity quantum self space where there is no external influence and you're totally aligned head and heart then you can make a good decision and then you know you're going to be okay but that takes a multitude of ingredients and it takes a real understanding of what that feels like let me explain what it feels like to be in a sovereign place where you make a decision without any force or any kind of fortitude and you're not striving and you're not trying to convince you're just coming from a pure place that will be for your highest good and for whatever else that is involved there that highest good that is the ultimate place to make a decision from that. What does that feel like? So if you're into water or the ocean or I just want to describe it like a free diving thing because I really love the ocean. So when you imagine that you dive underneath the water and you sit on the bottom and you just hold your breath and you're completely relaxed and it's just this type of silence that is almost noisy. You don't hear anything else, but maybe, you know, the little fishies nibbling on the coral and you don't even hear the waves above. It's just all of a sudden you are surrounded with this volume of water and there's just nothing. There's just this conscious peace. Uh, and when you've mastered that ability to breath hold and sit on the bottom and have that moment, it resets everything. And that's what conscious decision making is like. That is what being in your own control zone is like. So there's a little diagram that I've made for that, one of my Nikki diagrams. And that is which is showing my clients today and they love these diagrams. Um, so in my books, these are more fancy, but these are how I originally do them. So here you are, or you're a guy, and you're in this orange area here. That is the one area of being that is your responsibility. And outside of that is the agility of you to control your thoughts and your actions, you know, your finances, your limiting beliefs, your positive beliefs, um, everything that goes around you, how you react to something, how you respond to something, how you think about something. We can never get rid of our old subconscious. That is part of who we are. But when you understand what that negative thought is, you go, I'm not picking that baggage up. I'm just going to matrix that out. I choose my second thought. You suddenly have more control over how you feel on a cellular level. All good decisions, all good things for you, anything that is for your highest good does not take any force or struggle. In fact, it'll just be instant right and we know what that feels like you completely understand that feeling whether or not you just know in your gut that something is right but all too often 
we rationalize ourselves out of that space and then we start over intellectualizing things overthinking and getting pulled in all different directions whether it's friends health parents family tech money world finance government whatever this is all stuff that is out of our control zone but we actually allow it to affect our central nervous system and when we allow it to affect our central nervous system we're not coming from a place of self mastery we're coming from a place of trying to master the situation right so what i'm trying to coach is a place of self mastery of discipline and um of understanding that you are in control of your thoughts you are in the driver's seat no matter what is going on around you i used this oak tree analogy on monday stop trying to master the situation and concentrate on mastering self and what normally people do is they have a very rigid way of thinking about their rules once they come into this awareness of self mastery like right i'm going to do my spiritual work and i'm going to do my financial planning and then i'm going to go and do my well-being i'm going to go to the gym and it's once again we come up with this freedom of thinking and then all of a sudden we apply a regimented way of doing it which completely defeats the purpose of being in flow so it takes you right back to the analogy of having a governor on your engine when you go and rent a boat so it's only going to go you know 15 when you could go 50 so why do we put a governor on ourselves why do we limit ourselves and we because we are fear we sit in a place we think oh i don't want to go back to a place of pain i don't want to go back to a place of failure i don't want to go back to a place of loss we've only experienced those negative things because we've been told off blamed shamed guilted or we've had a thing that has maybe broken our heart or broken our bank or both right But what if you just accepted that that past doesn't have to translate into your future because you're not the same person you are now as you were then you're allowed to evolve become more aware make better conscious decisions around all those areas that build up your quantum life path and it happens like that but what our subconscious does it says well if you don't fight for it if you don't work hard for it if you don't do this you won't get that and that is so not true we do not have to give up our body to run a business we do not have to have one thing or the other this universe was designed for us to be completely enriched and for us to have full abundance with no barriers but we have this system this operating system that has been applied to us all it says there is only one place on pot of money there is only one place of happiness there is only one set of kardashians there's only one you know awesome rapper in the world whatever it is there is enough for anyone energy is infinite and when you can understand that when you can put yourself into that place you start to understand there really isn't a governor on your engine and infinite possibilities exist it is just when you can come and align heart and head now that takes practice so i always talk about the three steps of true um you know kind of getting into self mastery one thing is you know the awakening the knowing the innocence you're like oh my god totally i get this why didn't i think about this earlier i'm going to walk around with a crystal and i'm going to meditate or i'm going to go and go fishing every day or whatever it is that lights your heart up and you have this kind of voyage of discovery of possibility and you're like yes so that's the first step then all of a sudden you come up with the meaning that most people actually are not like that and you start to get dejected and demoralized and disappointed that the rest of the world isn't all it's cracked up to be and you look at them you think oh i really thought there was a positive possibility that everybody would be woke and we could all do kumbaya and co-create and then all of a sudden no one else wants to play like that and you think it's all doom and gloom and then you come to this third phase which is true self sufficiency which is hey i acknowledge that i am the possibility of all creation I also know that everyone else has got to own their own shit, right? So that's the understanding that other people are in charge of themselves. Let it be. That part comes with wisdom when you really realize that you're in charge of your own actions and your own filter and your own perspective, and that's the only thing that matters because you accept that other people are just doing their very best. You don't place judgment on it. If someone's bad behavior or codependency or gaslighting or whatever it is, and they fail to excel at your pace they fail to acknowledge it they fail to be accountable for it just allow yourself to accept that as that person's journey and don't attach to it and go how can i show up for myself and that is probably the biggest challenge for most people i work with because all of them are overachievers and all they do their entire lives is shot for everybody else and all of a sudden they have to put themselves first 
And wow, is that an external operating system reboot? That is like what I have to think about myself. I have to get up in the morning and make sure that I'm really, ready to go before I hit the world at large. Yes, you do. And that means taking care of this control zone here. So I really wanted to give a really short little video today that I could post later on IGTV to sparkle and shine and to give you an understanding that the toolkit, the roadmap of adulting um, and all the things that I always talk about, is so available to you, but you can't just wish for it or hope for it. It's the tiny steps in between that really make the difference. And, you know, sometimes I get super proud of my clients because not only do they get it, but they apply it. And that's really a difference. So you can go from understanding that force and mastering the situation is one thing. It's where we've all come from, right? Master, you know, when you do your tests, you can go and play outside. When you get and graduate, you can go and get a great job. When you do this, that, and the other, then you receive. That's not how it works. The universe isn't trying to hold anything back from you. You need to have the discipline, your 10,000 hours, your 10,000 thoughts to master yourself and go, well, hold on a second. What am I capable of? How can I show up for myself? What is my control zone, regardless of what is going on around me? When you can harness that, oh my goodness, that is where your mojo comes in. That is where the sense of enlightenment, this ability to not attach ourselves to a person or a place or a project or an outcome, because we know deep down we have an ultimate trust in something that's far greater than trying to control and master a situation. So your only real source in life to be there for those that you love or to be there for your kids or to be a great leader is to understand that you need to show up for yourself first and don't be afraid of that and go, whoa, I actually pretty amazing. And you know, it's nice to meet myself and I'm more capable than I ever imagined. And we put it in normal terms like stop people pleasing, stop martyr syndrome, stop rescuing, stop gaslighting, stop being a narcissist, whatever you want to say you've really got to take all your external validation requirements and come back uh, to an audience of one. And you would have heard that recently many times because that's what people are recognizing around now is that we all are here on this planet to be our own individual selves and that's how we co-create something magical. So instead of trying to mask who you are and duplicate something else, put the work and energy into mastering yourself because it really is worth it. So you're going from force to flow. So back to my gorgeous handwritten, amazingly designed diagram. Here it is. Here's you in the middle. This is your control zone. You're here, Kimasabi. These are all the things that you organically and have agility over and you master. They're in your control. And then everything else outside of that, well, that is just life and the world and other people and your kids and other people's behavior. So tune into that. Take some time. And think to myself, where do I sit in mastering self? How often do I point the finger out and say, well, this happened, instead of saying, how can I respond to that? Or, uh, you know, I feel frustrated when, what is that a reflection that I could work on to be self-sufficient in myself? So this self-mastery, working on the control zone, if you want a little photocopy of this, DM me and I'll send you my handwritten drawing because uh, it's very, very powerful. Uh, and also remember, you know, change is not the enemy. We're here to evolve and it's so exciting when you can understand that you're completely in charge of that. I do not apologize for your newfound energy, for um, your, you know, your newfound passion, enrichment, creativity, vision, and just purpose on this planet when you decide that you're actually in the driver's seat of your life because it is electric. And other people don't need to get it. They don't need to know why you've done it. You don't have to justify yourself. You just have to realize that this is it. This is one life, no dress rehearsal. And, um, you know, I think just give yourself a break, right? Because there's no perfection. So you're just constantly on this little journey. It's it's like being on a boat and figuring out the best way to take the waves. You know, one time the current's going this way and then you're coming back or it's cross, swims or whatever. That's just how life is. There's never just this flat pond that you can go to at high speed. You've got to think about fuel and resources and directions and GPSs. And it's the same thing every day. So be in charge of how you show up for yourself every day. Do you have any questions before I get off this live? If anyone has some questions or you like this, send me a thumbs up. Do you want more of these things? I don't know. I'm getting out of my comfort zone to do them for you. I like to call it the Muppet Show. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe 
to my YouTube channel, which is Vitality Coach TV, and the podcast, The Mojo Maker. It's available on Spotify and iTunes. Um, and I want to make sure that we are empowering you guys to, uh, hi, Carlo, that you actually start showing up for yourself. You know, like we go out to all these external, you know, coaching and we go to counselors and we go and we do MBAs and we're always kind of on the search when I can tell you that everything you need is within you. And I remember there was a fable or something to do, I think it's a something to do with, uh, maybe it's Hindu or something, when they place the head of God within a person because it's the last place that man would look. And I thought that's really beautiful. We're always looking out for the solution. We're always looking for that magic pill. We're always looking for someone else to tell us we've done a good job, you know. Well, you're your greatest fan and your greatest asset. And this life is so amazing. Even when it throws mud and curveballs and shitty stuff at you, it is still a beautiful mess. And when you can look at it like a rally and you can suit up and you can go in all conditions and just be, take the hand of people that really get you, that is where the magic lies. And I hope that this is giving you a little bit of inspiration to understand that this is what you are in control of, you, right? Everyone else can take care of themselves. You can lead by example with your kids. You can have conscious conversations with them. You can say anything is possible, but you have to be accountable. So have a great day, guys. Um, no questions because you're probably all too shy. That's no problem. Um, I really appreciate everyone joining on these little sessions. And you are in the driver's seat. You're the master of your destiny. We read it all the time on Instagram. We get really inspired. But I want to ask you, what are you going to apply from what inspires you? What are you going to do today that's for yourself? How are you going to make this something that is tangible, and something in your to-be list rather than a to-do list. So I'm Nikki Fogdemore, the Mojo Maker. Welcome back. Go check it out on YouTube. This is Instagram as well, and I'll post it on LinkedIn. You have a healthy, wealthy, wise week ahead, and you can get all my books um, on my website and also click the shop link in Instagram, and you can use code MOJO30 uh, for 30% off if you shop online. So have a really good rest of the day wherever you are. Thanks so much for joining, and um, stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. Bye.